So when you said that before you start work, it's good to check your prediction. And mm -hmm. one thing I was thinking about was, so I'm working on this kind of large uh, software engineering, you know, like uh, website feature task. And it's a little bit repetitive. I find it a little bit cumbersome and boring because it's not like interesting. There aren't interesting problems along the way. It's kind of like, okay, you just have to do this and then do this and then do this. So, well, and when, one thing I realized is that when I sit down to start, I think I have the prediction that I'm going to give in to a distraction. So uh, that's like, I'm going to fail. Um, and mm -hmm. so, okay, so is that a lack of self-efficacy? It could be that with regard to distractions there, you could say yeah. it's a kind of lack of self-efficacy if you're predicting that you'll fail. So that prediction is like a frozen snapshot of, of the task. It's not a complete picture of the task, nor is it a complete picture of what you're capable of in the task. But you can feel it right before you start. And it could color your experience of the task right before you start it. So it might be that for you then, the main challenge is maintaining intensity or constancy throughout the length of the task. So then you could be asking yourself, okay, if that's the challenge, then challenge plus X equals easy. What would you do? What would you add to this to make it easier? I would, maybe I would try to find a way to make it more interesting. That's kind of what, cause I'm thinking, oh, this task, you know, it's kind of repetitive and boring. So if I could find a way to make it more interesting or find like, actually it's almost like there isn't a check or the challenge is that it's, there's no challenge. It's just kind of doing that, which I know I can do. Um, so I need to find a way to kind of make it more difficult or think of like an, a more innovative or creative way to accomplish the task. If, if the task itself isn't a challenge, then it might be that the motive is the challenge. What would it look like to raise your motive for why you're doing this? Um, what would it look like to have like a greater, um, to bring a greater sense of love and service to this task? Um, what e even just say a greater sense of interior silence? I think interior silence is in say menial things or things that don't require like they're just easy for you. Uh, practice doing this thing mindfully in total silence opens up a whole new um, a feeling of like, there's like an internal dimension now to the task that's opened up, that the task becomes more meditative or contemplative. So, and just by seeking to maintain this interior silence, you can find that you can maintain intensity much more easily all through the task. So when you detect thoughts coming, that's like a little microcosm of distraction. You just detect it, let go of it, and then re-anchor yourself on the task itself. But the goal is to maintain this interior silence all the way through it. I think silence is like how silence makes every task spiritual in some way. Because there's a core of us much deeper than our psychological structures. And that core is much more akin to a silent awareness, you know, and, and so I think that we get more inspiration even when we are more habitually tapped into that. So you can look forward to that task as a way of tapping into this deeper spiritual core. Okay. All right. I'm on it. I got to go do that right now, actually. So we got to wrap up. <laughs> Great. I would still have a couple of steps though. <laughs> I'm motivated. I'm motivated to get started. Set a perimeter before you <laughs> yeah, close yeah, out yeah. all browser windows that you don't need. Exactly. Set a stop time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Those are those are the concrete steps that uh, yes. will make it easier as well. <laughs>